This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. Former Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi died on Monday after collapsing while in a glass cage inside a Cairo courtroom. Morsi was 68 years old. He was buried earlier today in Cairo. The Muslim Brotherhood leader was elected in 2012 in Egypt's first and still only democratic election. But he was deposed a year later in a military coup led by Egyptian Army Chief General Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. In his final comments, Morsi insisted he was still Egypt's legitimate president. Uh, Morsi's historic election came one year after mass protests led to the end of Hosni Mubarak's 30 years year rule in Egypt. Morsi spent the last six years of his life in jail, including extended periods in isolation. The Muslim Brotherhood, which is now banned in Egypt, has described Morsi's death as, quote, full-fledged murder. Human Rights Watch said, quote, the government of Egypt today bears responsibility for his death, given their failure to provide him with adequate medical care or basic prisoner rights. Morsi's death comes as El Sisi continues to jail tens of thousands of people in what the Associated Press has described as the heaviest crackdown on dissent in Egypt's modern history. We go now to Cairo, Egypt. We're we'll joined by Sharif Abdelkadus, Democracy Now! correspondent and a reporter reporter with Mata Masser, an independent media outlet in Cairo. Uh, Sharif, uh, this must have come as a shock to many yesterday, when you have the former president of Egypt collapsing in court and dying. Talk about the significance of Mohamed Morsi, also why he was in court. Well, uh, Morsi is uh, Egypt's first uh, democratically elected president, really the first uh, elected president in the Arab world, and uh, really that's what he'll be remembered for. Uh, but before 2002, um, uh, sorry, before 2012, before he became the Muslim Brotherhood's candidate for president, many people have never heard uh, of Mohamed Morsi. Uh, he was a bureaucrat in the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, he, uh, he was by no means a leading figure or an influential figure in the organization. Uh, he rose really through the ranks as, as a party man uh, and as a loyal bureaucrat. He was elected to parliament in 2000. And in 2011, after Mubarak's ouster, he was named uh, president of the uh, Brotherhood's Freedom and Justice Party. When the Brotherhood made the controversial decision uh, uh, to field a presidential candidate, it named Khairu Shatter, its leading financier and strategist, as its top choice. When uh, Shatter was disqualified from the race, then the backup candidate, Mohamed Morsi, was suddenly thrust into the spotlight. Uh, and during his brief uh, uh, one-year rule, he came under criticism from um, many segments of Egyptian society, uh, including those at the heart of the revolution at the time. Uh, Morsi's government and the Brotherhood pursued policies uh, that were meant to restrict the right to assemble, the right to protest, uh, the right to form NGOs. They spurned a draft law that uh, guaranteed the, form, the right to form independent unions. Uh, Morsi named Mohammed Ibrahim as his interior minister in January of 2013, who then embarked on a very harsh crackdown on any protesters against him. Um, but Morsi also had uh, some achievements. Uh, not, none less than uh, foreign policy, where uh, he helped broker uh, a ceasefire in Gaza in 2012 uh, after only uh, a week of fighting. And that uh, marked a very big difference that we saw uh, under Sisi's rule in 2014, when Israel absolutely pummeled Gaza for a number of weeks. Um, in November, he made a kind of a fateful decision, in November of 2012. Um, a fateful decision to issue a constitutional declaration that gave him temporary and far-reaching powers uh, that placed him beyond the reach of the courts, and this sparked kind of the first mass protests against his rule. Uh, and these protests eventually grew, culminating uh, in this June 30th mobilization that was very actively backed by the security establishment and the army. And, um, and then he was removed from power by uh, the military, led by Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, then a general, who Morsi himself had named as his prime minister the summer before. And uh, Morsi has been uh, in prison ever since. 
uh, in very uh, harsh um, prison conditions. Uh, many political detainees in, in Egypt suffer from uh, brutal prison conditions, but Morsi seems to have been especially singled out for mistreatment. Uh, he was held in solitary confinement for the last six years. Um, he was uh, kept in a cell for 23 hours a day with hardly any communication whatsoever. He was barred from seeing his family or his lawyers in the past six years. He only met, uh, had three family visits. Um, uh, and he regularly complained of, um, um, that he was suffering, his health was suffering. He said uh, in June of 2017 that he slipped into a diabetic coma for two days. Uh, he repeatedly asked in court uh, to be transferred to a private medical facility. Uh, his family, when they did see him in one of the handful of times, said uh, that he had lost uh, significant weight. Um, and uh, there was a report last year by, uh, headed by a number of British parliamentarians and senior lawyers uh, that found uh, that his health was indeed deteriorating, and they concluded uh, that if he didn't get treatment, it could likely lead to his premature death. Uh, and this is what we saw yesterday, and it was also a very dramatic moment, if I can just give you some of the details. Um, the official statement by the public prosecutor is that Morsi was in uh, the defendant's cage. He demanded from the judge to be able to address the court. The judge granted that. He spoke for a few minutes, uh, and during those few minutes, he said um, that uh, he demanded the right to speak to his lawyers. He likened himself to a blind man who had no idea what was going on in his trial. Uh, and he ended, um, he actually ended, his, his last words were, according to a lawyer who spoke to Madame Asr, um, he said, uh, he quoted from a poem, and uh, he said, my country, even if it fought me, is dear to me. My people, even if they resented me, are honorable. Those were reportedly his last words, according to one of his lawyers. Uh, after, after that, the hearing was adjourned, and then Morsi collapsed inside the defendant's cage. The other defendants around him, some of whom were physicians, uh, tried to revive him. Uh, he was then taken to hospital, where he was pronounced uh, dead on arrival. He was buried early today under uh, heavy security. Uh, the family um, attended the funeral prayers inside the mosque, inside Cairo's notorious Torah prison. Um, authorities did not allow Morsi to be buried in his family cemetery in the Delta. Instead, he was buried um, in a cemetery in Cairo, where a number of other prominent Islamists uh, are held. And security officials turned uh, reporters away uh, from there and, and barred any photographers, of, uh, photographers from taking pictures at the funeral. Uh, Sharif, I, I wanted to ask you in terms of the how the resistance has continued against the military regime uh, in the years subsequent to the uh, deposing of Morsi. Uh, and if you could talk about that as well. But also, the broader question here, to my mind, is that uh, the West has often pressed the necessity for democratic reforms in the Arab and Muslim world. But we've seen now, over uh, several decades now, that when Islamists uh, uh, win power through democratic elections, they're crushed, uh, whether it was in Algeria with the Islamic Salvation Front in the early 90s, when uh, the military crushed the, uh, what was seemed to be a victory, a popular democratic victory by Islamic forces, whether it was in Gaza, uh, when uh, in, in the Palestinian territories in 2007, when Hamas won an election and Israel, together with the Palestinian Authority, then sought to crush the Hamas victory, or whether in Egypt uh, in uh, 2013, with the deposing uh, by the military uh, of Morsi. What is a young Arab Muslim person in the, uh, uh, in the Arab and Muslim world, when they see this happening, uh, with the support and complicity of the West, what alternative do they have but to resort to uh, violence against their oppressors? Well, I, you know, I was surprised today when uh the response by the international community, there was very little comments by uh, coming out of Washington, out of Berlin, out of Paris, out of London, uh, about Mohamed Morsi's death. Uh, this was uh, the democratically elected uh, president of uh, the by far the largest, most populous Arab country, uh, who was deposed by the military, uh, who suffered uh, deeply uh, as a political detainee, detainee in prison. And yet, uh, there was very little comment uh, about his, his, you know, this dramatic death of, of him after speaking in court. Um, 
uh, and this speaks to uh, you know there's there's widespread acceptance of Sisi's government of of, of Abdel Fattah al Sisi as. Uh, as the, the president of Egypt. He's been accepted by Europe, which uh, lavishes uh, millions of euros on Egypt uh, in deals to try and stem the flow of migrants to Europe. Um, Egypt has become the biggest purchaser of weapons from uh, Germany in the world, uh, as a massive purchaser of weapons from France. They buy weapons from Italy and, and technology as well, and from England. So uh, this is kind of the consensus now. And CC says the line that, you know, at least we're not Libya, at least we're not Syria, at least we're not Yemen, all these failed states uh, around um, around Egypt that have, have, have collapsed following uh, brutal civil wars. Uh, many of them the West intervened in. Um, but, uh, and this is the line that seems to have been accepted. So uh, as far as resistance goes in Egypt, um, there's been, you know, we keep talking about the, the very difficult and harsh crackdown on any and all opposition voices in Egypt, and that continues. Uh, there's very little in the way of uh, political parties. Uh, civil society has been almost driven underground and is operating in a very repressive environment. The media has been controlled uh, not just through censorship but also through acquisition by the General Intelligence Services, which is now the largest media owner in Egypt. And we really saw that today when uh, the coverage in the local press of uh, Morsi's death not only one newspaper had it on the front page. Every other newspaper buried uh, the news deep inside the paper. They almost had identical coverage of 42 words, uh, not even referring to Mohamed Morsi as the former president. Uh, so that speaks to kind of the media landscape. Having said that, um, there still are people willing to speak out all the time despite uh, these very harsh uh, measures. We saw when uh, CC was the CC government was pushing through and parliament was pushing through constitutional amendments to extend CC's rule and power until 2030, uh, which was passed a couple of months ago. Uh, the, uh, hundreds of thousands of people signed an open petition with their names uh, online in opposition uh, to the constitutional amendments. Uh, we see these, these kinds of moments where people are willing uh, to speak out. So uh, in terms of organization and, uh, and actual groundwork, it's hard to tell what is actually happening. Uh, but despite what is a very difficult situation and an extreme harsh clampdown, I'm still surprised uh, by uh, the tenacity of people to be willing to speak out and criticize the government. You know, you mentioned uh, the response from the West. Uh, in April, Trump welcomed al-Sisi, General Sisi, who overthrew, of course, uh, Mohamed Morsi and is now the president. He welcomed to the White House for the second time, saying, we've never had a better relationship, Egypt and the United States, than we do right now. Also then, Trump pushed for the Muslim Brotherhood to be designated a terrorist organization, but apparently the State Department and the Pentagon said it didn't meet the requirements, and so they—President uh, Trump couldn't do what what El Sisi wanted, Sharif. Right. Uh, CC recently visited and, and uh, reportedly asked for that again, and we saw Trump again re, uh, restarting this call to label the Muslim Brotherhood a terrorist organization. Uh, even within, you know, the U.S.'s government itself, uh, many uh, State Department officials and Defense Department officials uh, think that will be a very uh, uh, this, uh, divisive move to do because the Brotherhood uh, operates in many countries as uh, a political organization. Uh, but there is this kind of branding uh, of uh, or an attempt to brand all Islamists as terrorists, as unfit for political rule. Uh, and this fits in the rubric of, of a, a larger world order um, that, uh, that has completely been um, accepted by, by the United States and the West. I mean, Trump does have a very chummy relationship with Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, and they, they sing uh, praises of each other. Uh, but again, this, the, the actual policy does not mark a uh, significant shift from decades of U.S. policy, whether by uh, Republican or Democratic administrations, which has been to continue uh, massive uh, military aid to Egypt, to continue diplomatic support uh, and economic support to Egypt. Uh, in fact, uh, Trump suspended more aid uh, than Obama did following even the Rabah massacre in August of 2013. Uh, but both of them, they both suspended some aid and both restored it eventually. Uh, so this has been a continuation of 
of a, of a long-standing policy, uh, which is to work with um, a strong man, uh, quote unquote, that we like, uh, and uh, and CC seems to be very happy with that, and that seems to be the international consensus, um, especially by Europe and the United States, uh, that CC is an acceptable um, is an acceptable leader that they're going to work with. And Sharif, if you could, in a, in a briefly uh, detail for us, what were the actual charges against uh, Morsi that he was facing trial for, and uh, and his trial extended for quite a period of time? Well, Morsi was facing multiple different trials. Uh, uh, at the time of his death, he was serving a 20-year sentence uh, in one case uh, that had to do with uh, clashes um, uh, outside the presidential palace. He was serving a life sentence in another case. He was serving a three-year sentence uh, for insulting the judiciary. And then there were two pending cases uh, on which he was going on to retrial for. Uh, one of them was a case uh, involving spying for Hamas, and that was the case that he was uh, on yesterday. And another one that he still he still had going on uh, had to do with a supposed 2011 uh, prison break, uh, where he was charged with that. So there's been you know these uh, massive kind of trials happening with uh, these fantastical charges against him. One of them is that he conspired with all these groups, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards and Hezbollah and Hamas to foment, um, you know, this Islamist takeover of Egypt. Um, and they've been marred by very serious due process violations. Uh, we've seen other leading Muslim Brotherhood members been sentenced to death multiple times. Many of them have re received multiple life sentences. Uh, so it's clear none of them um, will be getting out of prison. And um, uh, as long as this government is in power, and we've seen uh, yesterday Morsi die, uh, a leading, a former Supreme Guide of the Muslim Brotherhood, Mehdi Akif, died uh, last year, I believe. Uh, he was also suffering. He was very old and was and needed uh, medical attention, and he died in prison. Um, so th this is kind of the situation that we see. And again, I have to stress that this is what thousands and thousands of political prisoners in Egypt face, uh, years in prison after being convicted on trials that fall very short of due process. Many of them uh, have not even been convicted at all and are held in what's called remand detention, uh, where they can be held without conviction uh, for up to three years under Egypt's penal code, and they're often held more than that. And finally, many people who complete their sentences then face something called probation, where you have people like Shoken, uh, the uh, photographer who was uh, arrested in August 2013, or Ala Abdel Fattah, uh, a revolutionary icon, who both have, after spending five years in prison, now have, have five years of probation where they uh, are required to sleep, uh, spend the night at a police station every day from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. They have to turn themselves in every single day to the police station where they sleep either on the floor or in a cell or sometimes even outside the station. Uh, and they're basically detained for half the day. So it's these very draconian measures uh, that uh, the CC government has continued to pursue uh, and doesn't seem to be letting up in any way whatsoever. Reef, um, as we begin to wrap up, if you could talk about the estimates of how many political prisoners there are in Egypt, but also as a you know key member of the independent media landscape in Egypt, can you talk about the pressure on an independent press in Egypt? There, it's very difficult to uh, find an actual figure of the number of political prisoners. There have been uh, some estimates by rights groups that put it between 40 and 60,000 prisoners. Uh, we regularly see sweeps of people uh, that continue to this day, even people who haven't spoken out uh, for a long time, they'll, they'll, uh, their house will be raided at dawn and they'll be taken away. And usually they'll face charges like joining an outlawed organization, which I'm sorry, we just have 20 Muslim seconds left their, on the satellite, um, Sharif. We just have 20 seconds. Well, I would say the independent media landscape is quite small but thriving, and Madame Masr is uh, one, of, uh, one of the best outlets for that, but it operates in a very repressive and restrictive environment. Mm. Well, we thank you so much for being with us, Sharif Abdel Qaddus, Democracy Now! correspondent, a reporter with Madame Masr, an independent media outlet, speaking to us from Cairo, Egypt, upon the death of the former democratically elected President Mohamed Morsi. He died in a cage in court. Uh, 
where he was being tried. This is Democracy Now! When we come back, the former general counsel of The New York Times, Jim Goodell, on the jailing of and the espionage charges against Julian Assange. Stay with us.